you for joining us today for our webinar, Exploring the Power of Hoboware. I'm Jennifer Washburn. We are joined by Elena Rice, one of Onset's software engineers. Elena will give a brief overview on some of the advantages of Hoboware, and then she will show us some useful features within the software. At the end of the webinar, we will try to answer your questions. If we don't get to yours, please email us at sales at onsetconf.com. Hi, Elena. Welcome. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you. Before getting into the software, I would like to give you a brief overview of Hoboware. Hoboware software lets you view, graph, and analyze data with point-and-click simplicity. With Hoboware, you can easily set up your application in a matter of minutes, quickly read out and plot your data, export to spreadsheets for further analysis, and this software is available for Mac and PC users. The key features of Hoboware are powerful graphing and analysis tools which allow you to plot, analyze, and extract key information from multiple data loggers, alarming capabilities so you can receive instant notification via cell phone or email if conditions exceed set thresholds. There are several data systems included to further analyze your data specific to your application. Today's session will cover how to simplify data analysis using data assistance, steps on filtering, basic statistics for any subset of data within a graph, easily import and export data using Hoboware's file management tool. So we will now move into actually using Hoboware. My first example will be um, the data assistance. And we have the barometric compensation assistant to go over first. Now I'm going to open a data file which has um, well um, information from a well with one of our pressure loggers. And as you'll see down here, the available data assistance that come up is based on what measurements you have logged up here. So we're interested in barometric compensation, so you go ahead and click Process. Now first you must select the density, and since we did log temperature at the same time as pressure, we're going to go ahead and use that as that is your most accurate choice, and we were in fresh water. For the compensation parameters, we were also logging barometric pressure at the same time as the water level logger, so we will select that data file. And we have all our files. Okay, here's our barometric pressure file. And we'll go ahead and leave the default name of sensor depth. So what I'm being presented with here is a notice that this file I entered for barometric pressure is not of exact same length as the file that has my, my, has my water pressure data in it. So I'm going to go ahead and select option one and only compensate for where these two files overlap. So now you'll see up here I now have a new sensor depth channel. And I'm going to go ahead and unclick the absolute pressure, temperature, and battery since the point of the example is to show the, the depth in feet. And we'll also go ahead and uncheck the event types because we don't need to see those in the plot at this time. So what you have here now is a good depiction of the depth of your sensor. And you can see over the days how the water level dropped and then perhaps the pump came on in the well and then the water level increased again. So if you wanted to further analyze this data, you could select the zoom tool and go ahead and zoom in on certain dates and ranges so you could get a closer view of what was happening each day with these water levels increasing and decreasing. So this is one example of how a data system can take you from pressure data to depth in feet. So we'll move on to one of our other data assistants, which has to do with energy. And I'm going to open a file here that is on my desktop. Okay, so this was a file of monitoring the energy of a CR3 uh, computer monitor, which was on my desk. Again, the available data assistance is based on the measurements up here. And while I was logging several things for this example, I am interested in the counts. So you select the kilowatt hour assistant. Go ahead and process. If I had several counts series, I would still choose it up here. For this example, I only have one. I was using this watt node. If you were using a Veris or other, you would change the selection. Other, you just enter the con conversion factor here. 
for this example, I had two for a CT size. And down here, you can choose which new series come out of this data assistant. You can get energy in kilowatt hours, average power, or usage cost. And we'll go ahead and show all of them. And for uh, demonstration purposes, we'll let one kilowatt hour equal one dollar. All these are configurable. We'll go ahead and create the series. As before, you'll see down at the bottom, we have some new series that have been added. And we will go ahead and plot. And now you'll see that we have the original counts channel. Then we have our energy, average power, and cost. Now when this data starts getting interesting is you can see the cost per log data point, but then you may want to get a day's view or an hour's view, trying to figure out how much this CRT monitor is really costing you. So if you go ahead and select the cost channel and then go to edit and filter, we can take a look at what the total cost is while we're filtering the series we'll say per day for right now. And now you see here there's a new filter channel and we can go ahead and select a specific point and see that on December 8th with our parameters the monitor cost is $1.09. So again this is how you can take counts data and turn it into information that is, is very useful to yourself for energy, average power, and cost. Now this will lead us right into a more detailed demonstration of the filter series feature. There are several applications that can make use of this feature. We'll move on to a living room where a home user may be monitoring their temperature and, our, and relative humidity. So if I take a look at this, I may be particularly interested in what was going on in May. So in May for my temperature. So I can go up to you select the series first, then go to filter series, and I'll go ahead and I want average temperature. I want to see what the average temperature was per day. So now I have my new filtered series. Now it is masked a little bit by the original temperature series. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that temperature series so I can just get my average series more to the front. Okay, so that one's gone. So now I can go over here and see more details. So what was going on in the month of May? On May 5th, my average temperature was almost 64 degrees. Over here, my average temperature.